so I'll try to be as nervous, as not nervous as possible. Um, today I'll tell you a story, and it's a story about two individuals, very similar in genetic makeup, coming from exactly the same upbringing. However, one being slightly, if not significantly more talented than the other. It's a story about my brother and I, and our careers in basketball. If you saw me playing basketball today, you'd probably not really guess that I'm the less talented one, because you see me on a court and I score and I can play with the big boys, but in reality, I was never really considered an athlete. Let me give you a little bit about my background. Um, my dad was a professional basketball player. He played on a very big basketball club in Bosnia. My mom was a high jumper and a sprinter. She was even a Bosnian champion somewhere in the 70s. And I don't know where they went wrong, because when I was born, <laughs> it was probably the biggest disappointment when it comes to athletic ability you, know, you can expect from a child. They used to call me a ducky. And if you have a problem understanding why they called me a ducky, it says that when I ran back and forth on a court, it looked like a duck flapping my hands, stomping <laughs> <laughs> my feet. So I was called a little duckling. Well, they gave it a second try, and along came two years later, my younger brother, who pretty much you know, lived up to the expectations. He was the athletic one. It doesn't matter what you give to him, whether it's a tennis racket or a ball, give him a day or two to play around with it, and you will think, oh my god, this this person is a natural athlete. Well, you know, growing up in that kind of a household, having a brother who is a superstar athlete, I was not really interested in sports. I did not want to pursue a career in sports. I mean, my mom would let me rollerblade because I would fall walking. And I blame this on all on height because I grew really tall really fast. And I think my nerve connections didn't really quite make it yet. <laughs> so all of my brain was sending the right signals. I don't think the signals ever got to, you know, the lower and upper extremities. <laughs> I was not an athlete, but um, in 1993, my dad passed away, and he was my life. And I was his little princess, and it always turns out that way, that girls get more attached to their daddies, and, you know, boys get attached to their moms. So I was my daddy's little girl, and I was supposed to never play sports, and I was just supposed to look pretty and wear little pretty dresses and bows. Well, I had a really hard time dealing with the loss, and it really affected me in a major way. I did not socialize with people. I did not have a motivation to do anything besides studying and just being in my, in my room reading. So I thought one way of you know, giving kind of a homage to my dad was to be just like him. So I'll start playing basketball. And just for the sake of an argument, we'll assume that being tall is not a talent. It's merely a you know, characteristic you use to describe somebody. Because both my brother and I are tall. He's 6'8". So I decided to play basketball. And it was tough. People made fun of me 24-7. And back at home, people don't really care about being appropriate. So I think my coach spent 99% of the game just cussing me out. Like, how can you be that tall and just be so... Bad. It's like your dad was a basketball player, your mom is a sprinter, your brother is amazing. Like, how can you be so bad? On the other hand, my brother excelled. He was dubbed the next, you know, biggest player of our country. He had people looking at him, coming to his games. He even had like a little girl club that followed him around. <laughs> Not me. Uh, I was the one that was like. That's my sister, yes. And the thing is, I worked out more than him. So I had my, well, the thing is, in Bosnia, we didn't really have a women's basketball team at that moment because of the, it was just post-war situations, so there was not funding or opportunities for girls. So I played on a boys' team. So I was the only girl on the all-boys team, and I would play with them. I would do exactly the same drills, and it would take me literally 20 days to pick up a trick. It would take my brother 20 minutes. And it was frustrating because it just you look around and you see all these people and they're so talented and they they excel so quickly and yet I go home I go to a practice I go home and I behind my you know behind my building I would spend hours at the wall and for you that you don't for people that have never been kind of this <coughs> untalented wall actually teaches you a lot so I was taught how to run on a wall. <laughs> I would, they would make me put my hands on a wall so I wouldn't start flapping them, and they would just first try to teach me how to move my lower body so I would actually have a proper running motion. When it was time to teach me how to shoot, 
it was hours standing next to the wall and throwing the ball off the wall and then no that's not proper no that's not proper and then when it was time to learn how to catch things you just stand in front of a wall and throw the ball five million times and catch it here comes my brother oh behind his back dunking and i'm like this is so not fair and he does not do anything he He's late to practices. I'm always half an hour early. <laughs> I stay two hours later. He leaves whenever he wants because he's a superstar and he can do whatever he wants. In the middle of a game, he just leaves, does the like, goes says hi to his friends. Like very unprofessional and very not committed. Here I am working out three times as much as everybody else, and yet no results. Well, slowly things started progressing. I don't know how it happened, but I started picking up faster, and I think it's muscle memory, because once you repeat something so many times, it just becomes a habit to you. So people see me playing basketball right now, and they think, oh, you're such a talented basketball player. No, I'm not. Try to have me do something that I haven't done before, and I will not be able to do it. Well, the way it turned out, I actually got good enough. I got a basketball scholarship to Syracuse University, who plays in the Big East Conference, which is the, pretty much the top of when you can go when it comes to women's basketball, college women's basketball. I played against, against the best players that play in WNBA. Yet, my brother got a scholarship easily. And men's basketball is way more competitive than women's. And it's way harder to get a scholar, full scholarship. He gave it up. He didn't feel like, he, after a year, he was like, this is too much work. And you know, you can't, when you get to what, like, be one basketball, there's no joking around. And he was so used to being a superstar and doing whatever he wants, so he gave up. He ended up going, moving to Canada, playing for one university, and he gave up on that too. He's like, this is too much work. So I guess what I tried, wanted to say with this speech was sometimes you can look at two people and I mean we come from the exact same upbringing. We have a pretty similar genetic ma makeup, yet talent is not really always what drives a success. And with that I want to conclude with a chorus quote that I really like and it says, excellence in any one sphere of art or profession always comes after hard work and preparation. So thank you so much.